Thank you all for joining today's 10 for 10, a Masters of 504 mini series. Uh, today's presentation will be done by Judd Blakesley, and the topic will be the new SBA 504 SOP. Uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, today is Mountain West uh, summer event at Cowabunga Bay. You are all invited to attend. Uh, it starts at 6.30 p.m. at Cowabunga Bay in Draper, Utah. Uh, love to have you and your families there. Um, it's, it's a great time. We did this last year and we had great attendance. Come hungry. We've got plenty of food and drinks and get ready to race Judd on the water slides as he attempts to set land speed records. Um, for the uh, any questions that you have as we go through this presentation, I'll be monitoring the Q&A as well as the chat feature. So please type your questions in there and I'll either respond to those on the fly as we go or we'll pause um, at the end and have Judd address some of these questions. So with that, Judd, take it away. Hey, thank you, Danny. Looking forward to seeing everyone today at uh, Calabunga Bay. For those out of town or out of state, uh, you are still welcome. So we have changes to the SBA SOP. Uh, this happens, we always get so excited because it means opportunity. The changes sometimes are a little bit more conservative. Other times, as what we'll see today, SBA is a little bit more liberal in what they've made in their changes. So this is for sure a 10 minute update. There's so much more to read when you have um, a standard operating procedure book of hundreds of pages. So get ready and there'll be plenty to read after this. The main ones I want to cover are the changes with franchises, character determinations, the uh, affiliation, what is considered an affiliate, non-citizen ownership and equipment equity. So off the bat, franchises. Forever, if there is a franchise, SBA has made an ongoing list of a franchise registry. This would be a set list of franchises that were approved by SBA and then you'd get an addendum or confirmation that that franchise agreement has remained in place. And SBA deleted it. They just did away with it. So uh, many of us in the biz were shocked because you always go back to the list to just see who's okay or who's eligible. What is nice about this is any franchise that comes, uh, we can review it. SBA has us review it in-house. What we look for is if it was on the registry before, that is now an unofficial list and SBA kind of is looking for us to show that. If a franchise was not on the registry before, we look to see who is operating it, that the business owner is considered a small business separate from the franchise and is running his own business. So it gives some leeway and some opportunity to some franchises that may not have uh, been looked at before. Character determinations. If you've had a project where someone had a felony or a misdemeanor or a handful of felonies or misdemeanors, we'd have to go through paperwork. They'd have to re-explain and relive the moment from years ago. Um, and so now SBA has Bum, bum, bum. They've essentially done away with character determination. What they have arrived at is if a person is currently on probation or parole in the moment or under indictment, they are not eligible, but we do not have to get any of the past yes or no's if they've ever had a felony or a misdemeanor and pull up any court record. So it's only if a person is currently in that situation. So, uh, presenting the slide, I didn't know if we should be celebrating any of our past criminals that would now be eligible, but it does make it very easy for someone to not have to relive something they've already um, moved on from and done their time. 
affiliation. This is the one I for sure love. Uh, it is taking a moment to sift through and understand, but SBA made a huge change to affiliation. What this means is documents we have to collect, review. SBA has what they consider a small business. And so our operating company, our business owners and their affiliates have to fit into what is considered small by the SBA. And so with affiliation, Historically, we'd have to look at control and other items to see who's an affiliate, and then that would lead to getting tax returns and other items. So SBA has made a huge change and made a five easy step guide for affiliation. And if you look at step one, two, three, four, and five through this, which will send you a copy, it should take no longer than half a day to figure out what is an affiliate. This ad guide actually is really good. If you want to pin it down, let us uh, do the heavy lifting. Um, NATCO SBA said it's like riding a bike. This new analysis is easy. So we've put it to three easy steps. Number one, we look at ownership of our operating company only, the main business that's occupying the space. Someone has to be over 50% to look at affiliates. If there's nobody over 50, we then look at anyone over 20%. If there are not any owners over 20%, that means there are no affiliates for us to look at, which is awesome. So anyone over 50%, we then look at any, of, any company they have ownership in. They need to have over 50% ownership in that company for us to potentially consider it an affiliate. Of those companies, the NAICS code that's listed on the tax return, the first three digits, if they match our operating company, then it is an affiliate. If they have ownership in other entities that do not match those first three digits of the NAICS code, we do not need to look at it. And so this, this is something where we do not have to gather tax returns. We do not have to consider it for the size standard or other SBA debt they might have. So a quick recap of affiliation. We have our company. We have owners. We look at anyone who has over 50% ownership. If it's a dentist, we look at the ownership of the dentist. If he is 100% owner, okay, then we look at any other entity he has an ownership in. If he has a holding company for other locations, that does not match the first three digits of his dental code. So we do not have to look at them. If he is a 50% owner of another dental company, we do not have to look at it because he's not over 50%. If he's 25% of five other dental companies, we do not have to look at them because he's not over 50%. So there's an example of uh, SBA saving us time and just look, cutting it down of what we need to consider an affiliate. This is brand new, so please call us to talk through it. We'd love to uh, dive in and see how that fits. Next change, businesses owned by non-US citizens. Before we would have to do a background check before we even started the process and SBA did away with that and just said, get a copy of their permanent resident card, their green card, send that in with the file. And so we do have some questions that we're wondering with little things we used to have to do, but as of right now, SBA is saying, just send it in with the file. Do not do the pre-check because that would hold up uh, a lot of loans anywhere from a week to a couple months. Equipment equity. So this is when we're refinancing. SBA has now determined that equipment equity is eligible and can count towards a down payment. What that means for equipment that's 504 eligible, we can refinance it in with the project. It needs to be appraised. It can be included with the uh, building appraisal. It can be appraised separately. And then the difference between what it appraises for and what they owe can be counted as equity. So, we are very excited by this. Um, 
just because we usually deal with heavier equipment, but uh, any project that we could look to refinance the equipment in with the building, now we can use the equity uh, towards down payment. Okay, we're at a minute and a half left. Please ask any question along the way. We'll have time after for those that can stay on. For this, these are some deletions the SBA has made and are pretty exciting. Personal resource test, eliminated. Language explaining rentable property, including all references to exterior space and OC operations, eliminated. Circumstances may justify following the applicant a period of time after closing of the SBA loan to comply with the above occupancy requirements, eliminated. The borrower may not use loan proceeds to improve or renovate any of the rentable property to be subleased to a third party. Eliminated. Language prohibiting leasing portion of project property to businesses engaged in or supporting any illegal, any activity illegal under federal, state, or local law. Eliminated. Language counting residential space as part of business occupancy when necessary based on nature of the business. Eliminated. All language requiring SBA, CDC to assign, to obtain assignment of lease, landlord waiver, leasehold estate, eliminated. So SBA went through and made a bunch of removals. Okay, we did that in nine minutes and 50 seconds. Woo. Okay, now's the time. Uh, we can answer some questions. There's a lot there, um, a lot to unpack. Danny, did you stay with me through that? I was here. Okay. Uh, so a few uh, comments. Number one, eliminated will be in the individual's head the rest of the day. Eliminated. So. This is, yeah, this is the SOP of elimination. Um, John, maybe just like, this is not a question that anyone has posed yet, but maybe just kind of speak to our years of experience of sometimes we have to work with SLPC, the Sacramento Loan Processing Center, on knowing their own rules in the new SOP. If you could kind of speak to that a little bit about yeah, what we expect to see. Because we have annual meetings that uh, we go to. And SBA was there and unveiled these rules. And we're in the room with them as they explained the affiliation changes. So we got a really good handle on what it meant, what was gone. It just blew everyone's minds. And we sent in, you know, we sent in over, you know, five to 10 deals uh, right after that and used these new rules. And the processing center in, California came back like head shook, you know, didn't know what was going on because they hadn't even been trained on these new rules. So some time has gone on. We've sent in the trainings. I imagine they've been trained since, but now we're seeing um, loans fly through where they've accepted our write-up of what is an affiliate, what's not, why it's not included. And what's funny is the SOP, um, SBA said in their uh, deductions that this would save on average four to six hours per project. So we're excited to see what that actually meant. Uh, we now have learned that that's four to six hours of headache that is removed from gathering tax returns unnecessarily, um, having to go back or being questioned on others. It actually does make it pretty pretty simple on what we need to gather. Great. Thank you. Uh, just a general announcement, a copy of these slides and the recording will be sent out to all participants so you can share them with those in your organization. Uh, we will also have the recording uh, posted on our YouTube channel where we put all of our um, past trainings so that you can go back to them at any time. Uh, with that, there are no other open questions. As always, if you have any questions that arise with any of these changes or any questions that you might have, uh, we are happy to 
uh, participate. We are happy to help. We love getting involved in these projects early so that the borrower doesn't have to experience any back and forth on loan structuring and understanding, especially with these changes in affiliation. Um, we're having to collect so much fewer documentation. Um, internally, we've had some credit memos that uh, started before these affiliation changes happened. And our credit memo was like, I think it was like 96 pages or something like that. And after these new affiliation rules were in place, the credit memo dropped down more than half in length. So I think this is a welcome change uh, for our borrowers. I think yeah. it's a welcome change for our lending partners. And I know our loan processors and loan officer staff here at Mountain West is pretty jazzed on uh, not having to collect all that documentation. So, um, uh, Danny, 